Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So already in our previous video we have discussed in detail about the theory part of Kafka schema registry, right? If you want to know those detailed explanations then you can go through the link given in the description box. So let's try to explore the integration of schema registry with Python in this particular video, okay? So just a quick recap of this architecture what we discussed that is if we are not using schema registry then what problem we generally face that whatever data getting generated from the source system without doing the data schema verification if the producer is simply sending the data in Kafka broker then while consuming the data the downstream job might fail if it is expecting a certain key and then if that particular key is not available in a particular bad record or bad message then obviously our consumer or the downstream job will fail so to overcome that particular issue we have basically introduced the schema registry which is running in a separate cluster it is not within the same cluster where our kafka brokers or topics are available right and how the architecture works that is in this kind of flow we are having a schema right and if the producer is using that particular schema for the first time that means the particular schema is not registered in schema registry so we are having a avro serializer which will register this schema for the very first time and the schema registry then will return a schema id okay and avro serializer will serialize the data which is coming from the source system in real time right and it will only serialize if the data schema is compatible with this schema what we are mentioning in the schema file okay if the data schema is not compatible maybe the data type mismatch is there or maybe some particular key is not available in that data then obviously avro serializer will throw an exception and the producer will not send that bad record to our kafka cluster okay and if the data follows our proper schema as required then what the avro serializer will do it will serialize the data into bytes because the data has to be transferred via network so only bytes can transfer right so avro serializer will serialize the data to bytes it will add the schema id with it and it will send to kafka cluster and then here we are having our consumer consumer will get that particular message or that record which is having the serialized data as well as the schema id from a particular partition within a particular topic from our kafka cluster and then here in consumer side we are having avro deserializer okay if the deserializer is getting that particular id for the first time so it will make a request to schema registry that i need the actual schema corresponding to this particular schema id so schema registry will return the actual schema corresponding to that id and then avro deserializer will deserialize the particular serialized data by following that particular schema okay and then in target side it will be consumed okay and this will happen that is producer will go to schema registry or avro deserializer in consumer side will go to schema registry only if the schema id versus schema mapping is not available in local cache okay once it is registered in schema registry most of the time from next time onwards the schema id versus schema map mapping will be available in local cache itself okay so if next time a message is coming from the source then the producer no need to go to schema registry to get the schema id from the local cache itself it will get the schema id for that particular schema and send it similarly in consumer side what the avro deserializer will do it will basically check in local cache whether for that particular id the complete schema is available or not if it is available it will consume from there or else it will go to schema registry okay I hope we had a good recall okay and if you want detailed explanation obviously you can check my previous videos okay and not only that here the schema registry handle the schema evaluation also that is basically suppose our producer is using a new version of schema or the modified schema then producer will understand okay this is a modified version of schema so what it will do it will go to schema registry and there a compatibility check will happen in between new version of schema and our older version if the new version and previous versions are compatible then in the schema registry the new version will be written under the same subject and a new schema id will be returned and within that particular subject older version as well as new version will be available and new version will be having a incremented version id that's all okay and a new schema id will be attached which it will return and following that particular new schema id only 
the consumer will deserialize right that's how it handle the schema evaluation now let's see this particular process in practical manner using python programming okay right so here we understood one thing that in this kind of scenario schema registry run in a particular cluster which is a separate cluster not where our kafka is running okay so to show you this particular implementation what i am going to do that i will run my kafka in local system basically in conductor if you see that in this particular link our bootstrap server or kafka broker is running or kafka server is running now we need schema registry okay so in conductor itself schema registry is available but i am going to show you a schema registry which is available in cloud and that is basically in aws queue okay now it is many company use msk managed kafka cluster by aws so if you are using msk then you should use some schema registry which is basically provided by aws only that way your complete package will be available in aws itself and aws glue provide that schema registry okay so i am going to use the aws glue schema registry that way you will get a clear idea that schema registry is running in a separate cluster basically glue is managing that in cloud and we are having our local cluster kafka cluster in our local system okay so schema registry and kafka cluster are not running in same place so that idea also will be getting if you are using aws glue for schema registry okay so i will go to aws glue and what i will do i will basically create a registry first so here i am going to use us is one region and here i will go to schema registry and here i can create a registry first okay so here i will explain each and every line of this particular code no need to worry as of now let me just create a registry what is registry registry is basically something inside which we are having multiple schemas okay and each schema might have multiple version etc etc so registry name i am providing my registry you can provide any name as per your choice okay and what i will do here i will create the registry if i create the registry here you can see within the registry i am getting the option to add schema okay i can add multiple schema within it okay and now let's see the code so for this particular connection i am going to use a module which is aws glue schema registry okay all you have to do you have to execute pip install aws glue schema registry in your virtual environment to get this particular module and all this pip installation also will be available in the code you can just execute them one by one three things you have to install one is porto3 one is basically aws glue schema registry which will help us to use the glue schema registry along with our local kafka cluster and then here kafka python which is a default python library which we used earlier also to interact in between our kafka cluster and python okay right now how to work with glue schema registry and kafka if you see here here everything is written the complete code is provided i will explain the functionality part if you want to explore about more detail related to the code you can obviously check the documentation okay so what i am doing here here i am importing the necessary modules okay like porto3 is required to set up the connectivity between our local pycharm and glue okay then here kafka producer is required to create the producer and here from aws glue schema registry whatever components are required those i am importing okay now what is the next step next step is obviously i am creating a porto3 session with access key secret key and region also if you want you can specify here or when you will be creating client that time also you can mention not a problem okay so here porto3 session is created i hope you can easily understand because we need to interact with glue and here our code is running in pycharm in our local system so obviously we need some authenticator so here we are using user id password based authenticator okay then here what we are doing here we are creating the client using this particular session we are creating our glue client okay and we are mentioning the region name as us is one because in our case the schema registry is available in us is one okay up to this also it is very simple i hope then if you recall here whenever we are using schema registry we need two things one is afro serializer one is a schema file which will define how our data structure should be okay or what this schema should be followed right so here we are doing that first we are creating a client for our schema registry okay using the glue client and then here we are creating the serializer so avro serializer is required right 
so here that that one we are creating and then here what we are doing we are creating the producer for our kafka cluster our kafka cluster is running in this particular url as you can see here in conductor here this is our bootstrap server right so we are providing that and here this serializer we are mentioning this we will use as avro serializer okay and now here what we will do if you recall we need one schema file where this schema is defined so for that i created a file okay i have given the name of the file as user.avsc av is sc is basically for avro extension okay if you see it is a very simple json kind of file where you need to only worry about the fields part okay fields is nothing but if you see it is an array right within array you have to mention what are the key value pair what are their data types you want to see in your incoming data okay like here i want name should be one key then age should be another key and subject should be another key name should be string type age should be integer type and subject should be string type okay and this above part name type and namespace as of now you can ignore basically you need to configure this particular fields part properly which will define your avro schema okay now what we need to do we have already created a file where our schema is there now that particular schema our serializer will use to serialize our incoming data as well as if this schema we are using for the first time avro serializer will register that in our schema registry in this case that is glue schema registry right so here what we are doing we are reading the particular schema file that's all okay the next step what we are doing we have to basically publish some dummy data to test our schema registry is working or not right so here i am preparing a dummy data like name is john doe age is 30 and maybe i will put subject okay because subject should be another key which is expected and then here i will put english okay right so this is a data which is following our schema as expected but we will not do that val validation manually we will leave that particular validation responsibility to schema registry okay now here what we are doing we are basically using producer dot send to send the data okay and point to be noted whenever we are sending data here what we need to do value equal to data data is basically what you want to send the message part and then here the second element of the tuple should be the schema okay so what will happen in the back end the Afro serializer will take this particular second element of the tuple and it will use this one to validate whether the first element is following the proper schema or not and then it will serialize and also the Afro serializer will register this schema if it is used for the first time that means if it is not registered in our schema registry okay and then here we are basically following the approach of synchronous send so here we are putting a time code okay basically we are expecting some response from kafka cluster that okay this message is written okay what response we will get in which topic it is written what is the partition number what is the offset etc etc okay i hope up to this it is very simple all we need to do we need to mention our topic in which topic the message will be published okay so our kafka cluster running in local if i go to conductor here you can see we are having some topics but i will create a new topic to show you a fresh demo okay so maybe I can put the topic name as glue schema DMS. Some random name I have given for our topic. So what will happen? This producer.send will try to look for this particular topic. If it is existing, it will publish the data. But as you can see here, if I refresh, then here we don't have that particular topic, right? So producer will automatically create that particular topic. Okay. And another thing we should observe, what is that? That is in our schema registry as of now if i go here in our schema registry currently there is no schema okay and here we are using basically this particular schema for the first time so our afro serializer should register this particular schema in our schema registry as well okay as per our theoretical understanding so what i will do i will run this particular code i will save this one and here i will run this code so let's see whether it is working or not So here see process finished with exit code 0 that means the program has not thrown any error what are the three outputs it has given obviously here we are writing the data at this particular topic so that particular topic name it has printed then 
this topic the producer is automatically creating okay we have not created this earlier so whenever producer create any topic by default it is having only one partition so partition 0 only it will be having and then offset value obviously as this is first message so offset will be 0 right so i hope up to this you got it now we need to check first whether this schema because we are using first time so it should be registered in our schema registry so let's just refresh here and here we will see this particular schema okay point to be noted observe this schema name okay the schema name is always is same as our topic name okay because whenever we work with kafka generally we follow a particular pattern that within a particular topic the same schema related messages will be published okay so what the glue is doing here that it is creating this schema having the same name as of our topic so that we will not be getting any confusion from here itself we can understand that this particular schema our glue schema bms named topic is using okay and that's what the topic name is right glue schema bms it is obvious okay now here let me go inside this particular schema and let's see whether this schema is registered properly or not so if i go inside this particular schema here you can see the compatibility type it is backward compatibility what is backward compatibility already i discussed in my previous video if you see this particular ppt here at the end i have uh, shown with one example so backward compatibility means we have to update the consumer first and then we have to update the producer okay and even i have shown one example also like here suppose our v1 version of schema looks like this suppose i am removing a particular field in our new v2 version then that should be implemented first in consumer or else if we are just implementing that new pattern schema in producer first which is no longer sending the second parameter then obviously our consumer might start failing because consumer will expect that particular field right so whenever we are removing some field then it should be following backward compatibility rule that is in consumer side first it has to be implemented then eventually producer will switch to the new version of schema okay so here this particular schema is backward compatible that is fine data format apache avro that's what we are using this schema is created within, within this particular registry that is also fine because here while creating this schema registry that is client for our schema registry we are mentioning that this is our registry where this schema has to be created okay fine the last update time also it is showing and see this schema we are registering for the first time so it is having version 1 i will go inside that and then here see the same schema whatever we were having in the user.avsc file that same schema it is showing here that is within our this particular topic whatever message we are going to publish that should have the name key then age key and subject key if any of these are not available or for any of these if data type is not matching then the avro serializer will not publish that particular message to kafka okay let me show you with that particular example okay so here what i will do here i will maybe remove the subject okay only i will keep name and age now i will run but as per this particular schema the subject is must okay and it should be string type so see here the producer has not published the message here it's thrown an error no value or no default value for subject okay either you can provide some default value so that if, if your message don't contain the subject key it will take the default value or else you have to provide the value if neither is available obviously it will throw an error okay what i will do i will reverse this maybe suppose for example age instead of integer i am passing some string value okay just for example and if i run this here you will see that age integer required okay not string right so here due to application of schema registry that data is not getting published in our kafka cluster okay now let's see in our consumer side okay how the data looks like okay so here i am going to use conductor only as of now to show you the consumer in my next video i will show you the consumer implementation with python okay so what i will do here i will start a consumer okay so here consumer is started i will pick up my topic my topic is glue schema bms okay now here value part so value part it should basically consume from aws glue schema registry post deserialization okay so i need to choose glue schema registry then here i need to provide the region which is us east one for our case right 
Now here you can see to use conductor for deserialization purpose using AWS Blue Schema Registry, your AWS credentials must be set in your environment before starting the conductor. Okay, AWS credential in the sense access key and secret key. So that I already configured. Where you can configure? It is very simple. You need to go to C drive. Then you can go to user. Within that you can go to user again. And there you can create a folder with dot AWS. Inside that here you can create two files. One is basically credential which is having the access key and secret key whatever I am using in my code that same thing is available and another one is basically config file which is having the region name and the expected output okay so these two you should be having in your environment then only your conductor consumer will able to set up the connectivity in between local system which is running in desktop and blue okay so what I will do if I just start the consumer we should see this particular message which was published for the first time properly okay so let me start the consumer so it is waiting it is just going to take some time or here i have kept basically data starting from now i have to keep from beginning then it will be consumed let me start now so see here whatever message we published because it is following the schema properly so here in consumer side also it is deserialized properly okay so I hope overall picture is pretty much clear to you. Now let's see the schema evaluation part. Okay, suppose after few days of this particular pipeline deployment, business team come to us and say that they don't need this subject part anymore. So what we can do? We can simply remove this particular field from our schema, what we are using. Okay, and now the same schema, but the schema is updated so that means it is coming under schema evaluation okay but here we are using the same topic also so what will happen when we will run our producer next time the producer will understand that the same schema is used but the schema is modified so what it will do it will do a backward compatibility check because here in our case this schema compatibility is backward compatible okay so post doing backward compatibility check it will see that okay it is basically removing one particular field so it will be backward compatible obviously so what it will do it will register this updated schema with new version okay and the new schema id will be returned which will be used for serialization as well as in consumer side it will be used for deserialization okay so let's see that so here we have updated our schema and now here i will just save this and name might be i will publish as hello age i will pass as 45 and earlier we have seen when we are not passing subject english that time we are getting error right because in the previous schema we were expecting subject as per the schema definition right that's why it's thrown error when we have not passed subject but now let's remove subject part okay so because of schema evaluation this message should be getting published and in the consumer side also you should get that let's see see here we got the message in consumer side and here also it is published here the offset value is one because this is the second message which is published in our kafka topic blue schema bms okay and here if i go to schema here if i refresh here you will see that version 2 is registered successfully okay and see here you can see the latest version okay right so that's how the schema evaluation also happening okay and as soon as the new schema is getting registered the kafka schema registry will send the new schema id that new schema id will be tagged with the serialized data and it will be sent to kafka cluster the consumer will get that particular new schema id in local cache that will be a miss so it will go to schema registry it will request that for this particular id for the new version give me the updated schema it will give that schema based on that the serializer will deserialize and put it in target okay as simple as that right so i hope you understood using blue schema registry how we can make a setup where always there will be a data verification or data schema check before publishing the data in kafka okay and here the schema registry is running in glue surfer managed by glue and kafka is running in our local system so like earlier i told you again and again right that the schema registry server and kafka server should be different place not in same place right that's what we can see here also and this is all about the producer part i hope you understood this in my next video i will explain the kafka consumer part 
using AWS Blue Schema Registry. Okay, this is all for my this video. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share, and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now, and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you.